Welcome back to The Pickup, Stab and Vans weekly show covering the Hawaiian season and the Vans Triple Crown of Surfing. My name is Danny Johnson and I'm joined here by my co-host, Holly Wong. What? This is how I'm doing the show now. This is my voice. <laughs> Yes, so we're coming in hot to the deadline of the Triple Crown. There's only a few days left and we can say at this point that this wild experiment has been a success. We've seen some of the, some of the best waves in Triple Crown history go down throughout this event period. Yeah, and it's not over yet. The forecast says it's going to be pumping for the next few days. I'm excited and nervous <laughs> and on, the, on my tippy toes. What's it going to take for someone to come from behind and, and really score some clips in these last few days? You know what it is, it's packing a lunch and sitting down at the beach all day. Being out in the water and just lathering up with sunscreen and just not even going in. Apparently Griffin's been getting more water time than anyone on the North Shore. Is that right? Apparently he's out there hours and hours on end. Really? Yeah, well that, he gets like what? 10 clips a day. He's had four of those crazy backdoor barrels. That's yeah. like insane, never ending. Yeah, that's, that's why, like, for a guy that isn't Hawaiian, no Hawaiian blood, to be getting that many sick waves out there has been pretty nuts. Yeah, there's actually been a lot of people that have just come out of nowhere towards the end. Baron Mamiya has only submitted one wave, but it was just a scorcher where he just came flying out the end like a cannonball. John John, his wave's been in pretty late. As well, Carissa Morse only started really submitting clips in the last week, and they've been pretty impressive. Yeah, she looks pretty comfortable in Hawaiian juice. I haven't really seen her surf pipe. Actually, sorry, got flogged at the Pipe Masters. That was pretty entertaining. <laughs> well, that's the one place where she still needs waves. So that could be interesting. That could yeah. be her one weakness is lack of time at the pipeline. At the Pipolina. Well, pack a lunch. Even though there's been so many magical moments, there's also been some monumental letdowns. Firstly, stabs Ash and Goggins. I reckon Goggins is getting way too much airtime and talk time and he's not walking the walk whatsoever. If only he could surf with his mouth. He'd be ripping. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then on top of that, there's Mikey C. Morella, who has been dropping a few clips, but there are all these blurry, unwatchable, grainy surfline rewinds. First of all, learn my name, Danny Johansson. It's Sarah Mella, Sarah Mella, not that hard. Second, is the job getting done or is the job getting done? I've got four of six waves uploaded, which is more than we can say about a lot of our current Vans Triple Crown competitors. I just had a quick scroll through the entries and there are only eight surfers who have all six of their waves uploaded. On the men's side, it's Tori Meister, Shaden Picaro, and John and Nathan Florence. On the women's side, it's Bronte McCauley, Tatiana Weston Webb, Zoe McDougall, and Nikki Van Dyke. Way to read the rules, nerds. As you may remember, a surfer can only win the Vans Triple Crown or an individual event within the Vans Triple Crown if they have all six of their waves uploaded by January 15th. Here are a few of the surfers who are on the verge of completing their quota. Carissa Moore, Cliff Capono, and Billy Kemper each need one wave apiece. Coco Ho, Steph Gilmore, Kiala Kennelly, and Cam Richards each need two waves apiece. Meanwhile, my one true adversary in the race for second last place, Ashton Goggins, has yet to upload a single wave. I'm not sure if he's been too busy airing out his sweat-soaked beanies or if he's just terrified of the big Hawaiian waves, but either way, it's a pathetic performance. Another upload delinquent surfer is the defending Vans Triple Crown champion, Kelly Slater. The GOAT's only got two waves uploaded at this point, and we're honestly starting to worry about the guy. What's going on, Kelly? Are you stuck in a tree? Caught in some vertical wall somewhere, or have you just been hanging out with Ashton Goggins? Hey, do you think he likes being called the goat? I feel like I'm gonna stop calling him the goat. I feel like it's too disrespectful. If Kelly was to come out and be like, stop calling me the goat, everyone would still call him the goat. Yeah. So he can't, he can't let it run. I, I don't even, has anyone even asked him if he likes to be called Kelly? His name's Robert. I feel like I'm gonna start getting back to calling him Robert Slater. Rob. Just out of respect. Yeah. Even though goat means greatest of all time, it does it, have a... It makes you think about goats. Yeah, and like goats a, are pathetic. They are pathetic. They are. Yeah, that's like, a goat is no one's favourite animal. Nah. 
I've actually got some Kelly Vans Triple Crown of Surfing trivia for you both. Kelly's won three Vans Triple Crowns, 1995, 1998, and 2019, which means the gap between his first victory and his latest is 24 years. He's also the oldest Vans Triple Crown competitor in both the men's and women's division at 48 years old. He does have a weakness in Sunset. Yeah, sunset. he's never won Sunset. He's never won Sunset. So maybe that's what's holding him back, because this year he knows that he can't win the Triple Crown without getting two decent rides out there. I think the GOAT would never take that to his grave. I think he'll have this breakthrough moment at sunset. Like, he'll actually, he did. Remember that left pit that he got out there? No. <laughs> Kelly the got the most crazy left pit at sunset one year. I don't feel like he's really got a bad relationship with any waves anywhere. So, if there's a bit of a monkey on his back, like if sunset is the monkey, um, I reckon he'll train it pretty well. Well, he's got two monkeys on his back now because you challenged him to a to land a rodeo at pipe and he hasn't done that either, so. I oh, know. He could start a small petting zoo on his back at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> you might remember from last episode that we purchased two fully loaded Brewer Chapman guns from legendary shaper Al Chapman, a 7.6 and an 8.6. And this week we have Dane Gadowskis and reigning Triple Crown champ Stephanie Gilmore at one of the trickiest ways in the world, Sunset Beach. The day you wake up and not try to be a teenager is the day you're hung up. You're not a surfer no more. Surfers, like, they don't give a shit about nothing. Amen to that. <laughs> All right, going to surf sunset. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. Loading up this beautiful Al Chapman shaped board into the back of the rig. And we're gonna head down the road. The drop knee in the barrel thing was so, so pure. <laughs> you just don't kind of see those lines at all nowadays. I mean, it's pretty spectacular. Have you seen the clip of Al when it's in the Surfers the movie and he's talking about like giving people waves? Give a wave. He's like, they might have a good looking sister. Give a wave. You know, give a smile, meet a friend, be nice to him. Find out where they live. They might have a good looking sister. You know, it's like the most like, amazing messaging. I just thought it was pure. These rails feel really thick. I'm sure it's made for a big fella. I think it's kind of tucked in in a cool way where it might just sit in the water really nice. I was such a master shaper that it's just gonna be a real treat to, to ride one. This looks incredible. This will be my second time riding one of these beautiful surfboards. I can never really tell until I'm on it, riding the wave. Yeah, you can tell that's pretty darn flat. <laughs> We're just gonna see when we get it in the water, the ocean doesn't lie, that's for sure. I want a straight spot in the tail. In the tail reel. Yeah, and curve in the front. And you don't want that straight spot a little further up, right? I want the up, flat right? bottom this way. Flattest bottom is your fastest bottom, not the concave. The flat bottom is the fastest thing there is. It's flat, yeah. Yeah, it's completely flat. Definitely flat and fast. I like it. I like everything about it. If that's his thoughts, then I'm gonna just listen to it and just go ride it. You sit in that thing and you can have something to push off and drive off of when you're coming you know, into that bottom turn and you lock it and just sits right in that beautiful curve of the wave and thing's built to fly. You gotta get really low when you wanna do a turn on these. Like, I'm, I think at one point I was trying to grab my outside rail to do a bottom turn. It's like you get so many people that paddle past you and they, they give you a compliment or they're just, you know, there's always a, a really positive comment made about the board that you're on. Yeah, it, it just like goes really fast and holds its line really well. It's like from a small wave to a big wave, all you really want to do is just have that speed and glide and he goes down now. Oh, that was cool. 
seeing people go lighter would lend itself towards more performance on the bigger waves, but I mean, getting that much speed and going over like a lot of chops, like, dude, weight's your friend, volume's your friend, length, just gets you down the wave face, and when you have more speed, you can do bigger turns. This week's kitten. So there was a lot of people eating it this week, which just happens whenever there's the surf's pumping in Hawaii. But our number one kitten is Brody's sail for this turn that did not work. Looks like he was going to snap his ankle, but he's lucky he's young. Yeah. I do respect the big grab rail cutty. The turn was manly. Your little ankles are still kid-like. <laughs> they still work. All right, and our lines. First up, we have Ethan Ewing. Ethan started out really quiet with his Triple Crown campaign, and I don't know what he was up to for the first couple of weeks, but he's really gone bananas for these last couple. It was surfing that wave of Holly Eva like it was like a three foot wave. He looks so stable, just coming down the face. Yeah, he looks fit. He was looking maybe too fit. <laughs> <laughs> too fit for Which is definitely a thing. And next up, our second set of lines is all the girls that have just been turning on the hacks this week. They've been just throwing chunks of water off the back of Hallie Eva and Sunset Bombs. Brissa Hennessy, Carissa Moore, and Luana Silva. They've been going psycho on the hacks. I wonder if like, yeah, training regimes have been altered to cater for the big hacks. How do you train for a big hack? I don't know, it's more of a question for Holly. I haven't got my hacks down as of yet. Yeah, Holly, you're someone who I would consider an expert at throwing down huge, powerful turns out in the water. What, what's the key to a good hack? When you're coming into a big gaff, you just want to come into it with like hazardous speed. You can really tell when someone's putting all their effort into a nice big hack, when the board's rolled over on its edge, you can see the fins, and they've got some grim looking ugly face on, and they're just mm. ready to go. You had me at hazardous speed. Is the... <laughs> Old has. This is the... <laughs> What are we going to learn next week? I don't should know. We, should we maybe get like Nate to teach us how to do a massive air or something? Oh, he's still thinking about that air. I am. We've actually got a piece from Nate, because not only is he doing the biggest airs that have ever been done, he's also working tirelessly for us as a reporter over there in Hawaii. So let's check out what Nate had to say when he went to check out one of the North Shore's most prized playgrounds, the Sheepside Skate Park. Since COVID, it's all locked down, so I'm looking to see how to get in there. Oh, wow, they got new signs up. I wonder how long that's been there. Describe what Sheepside is. It's basically home where you go there and you forget about everything, like oh, your work problems, whatever, you're snapping, and any kind of negativity that comes into you should all leave when you enter the doors of Sheep because that's our happy place. We're at Sheepside. It's kind of close to Velzyland or Sunset, right down the road from Sunset. That's why we're here, is because this happened during while the Pipe Masters was going on. And what Sheepside is, is a do-it-yourself skate park built one bag at a time and then one truck at a time. And the thing that's cool, how this was made, was a bunch of people who are in the community who love to skate but are sick of going to the skate park and dealing with all the little kids. They've actually come down here and put their, you know, hard time into creating something that they like to skate. 2016, it was just a bare room empty, the first room. We started from there cutting transitions. That, it was about one year for that room. But the reason why Sheepside, like phase one is important or something really cool was because it has a mini loop. So yeah, I think like Ivan Florence, I'm pretty sure he's the only surfer that really hits the loop. I don't know, it's, it's intimidating when you look at it, if skating all the time. I heard it's not that hard, but to see Ivan hit the loop, 
the way he does with his arms by his side, not even flinching a bit. Um, it's really cool, and I, it looks like it feels so good to do. By 2017, the middle of 2017, we had the second room. But anyways, they had that for a while, and then they wanted to make it bigger and better, so they built phase two over here, which is more skate park style, but they made all their own coping. This is the barbecue area where you can hang out and barbecue drop in from it. This is phase three over here. And what this is, is just a real pool. That new pool's gnarly. You better be on your shit if you're gonna ride it. But it's pretty steep, real shallow in. It's like more like a real backyard pool was. It's not like a skate park style pool. You can definitely see the difference in the construction on phase one, where it was really one bag at a time. In phase two, where they brought a truck in and, and did it proper, you can definitely see the difference in the surface texture. But that's the coolness too. You can see the evolution and even all the work, you know, where they've gotten better at doing their job. But their art in like phase three actually looks like it. it's so good, they didn't want it to be that good, you know? It, they've improved it 100%, it's art. Most, all the pros that come through town definitely come by here. I know that like some of the local kids like Noah Montez and then the guy who made it, Jason Tip. Ivan skates really good here. Well, they do have a GoFundMe, but it's kind of just funds itself. It's made itself. And I know Jason, this is his dream. And I know he started it. So from that, then other people got involved. Sheepside is its rawness. And so if you could skate here, you could kind of do it anywhere. And so it really makes sense to have a place that's just raw to skate on the North Shore, the way the ocean is, you know what I mean? It all kind of coincides. And something we haven't spoken about yet is the $10,000 that Vans is throwing out there for any competitors that get creative in this competition. I'm yet to see Kyle Annie on a foil or pipe in the tube. He's registered as a contestant and he he hasn't submitted a clip yet. I thought he'd be bringing in his inflatable pool toys and those things he's been using at Jaws. Kyle and he hasn't surfed a wave under 100 foot in a few months now. <laughs> We've seen Dane Godowskis riding a 4-2 at sunset, which I thought was pretty interesting. And we have seen some creativity, but has, we haven't really seen the amount of creativity that we've seen from you over the years. Well, I'm not, I'm not too sure. I don't find myself like a creative bloke whatsoever. What about your uh, soft top to bodyboard invert? Yeah, well, I figured that was actually maybe the most creative thing I've done, but it has been sabotaged. Has it? Yeah, Jamie O'Brien took it and called it his. Did he? Yep, he snaked it off me. Yeah, it's been popping up all over the show. Oh, really? Yeah. The skate term for that is ABD, already been done. Oh, ABD. So, yeah, I, I hit him with an ABD when he, um, on a JOB vlog. No way. Hit him with an ABD, has his all, all over it, mate, a couple years ago. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and did he write, did he write back? Don't think so, no. Oh. <laughs> but. Guilty. Hey, what I want to know, has anyone ever copied as your tandem surfing at Noosa Point that you did back in the day? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't think so. What you brought to that session was not just some really innovative surfing and dismounts and, and some really powerful maneuvers with your buddy there, yeah. but you also really brought it with the outfit. Yeah. I haven't seen anyone surfing in anything inter interesting. It's just, it's just been your standard attire, but what you brought to that session was it was it was pretty sexual yeah it was sometimes like sex sells you just gotta get sexy <laughs> i know yeah i would like to see some tandem surfing some lycra and just strutting your stuff think of it more as a, of a catwalk than yeah than a lineup what was jerry lopez's famous line about pipeline he said for those who know how to do it it's like a catwalk oh, oh that's right oh, yeah. what if someone take that to the next level and actually treat it like a fashion catwalk and really get fancy. All it is getting in the tube at the pipeline is just taking off in the right place and uh, hold, you know, pulling into the section and just holding your edge. And it's, it's, it's a cakewalk. <laughs> Someone who has been mixing it up with a different approach and riding different equipment is Cliff Capono, who we actually have a profile on. So let's cut to that now. Uh, Ovao Cliff, no Hilo Mayao, my Kahupa o Wainaku, no Hovao, my Papa Ikoi Kemanawa, me Kuohana, He Hova Iao. My friends were, you know, going on the QS, trying to qualify the world tour. 
I have a bunch of friends that qualified for the world tour and, and competed. I chose to go to school and my kind of passion was in learning about science through like biotechnology, biochemistry, and then eventually getting my um, graduate degrees in uh, ocean chemistry. So now with my, my degrees that I have from university, I try to figure out how to um, better protect coral reefs. I specifically look at uh, coral resilience. I also uh, wrote a grant to the National Science Foundation to figure out why are the corals so resilient on the east side of the big island. And that's what I've been studying uh, at this wave called Honolii. It's a wave I grew up surfing. It's a very special wave for, for me and many people on the big island. Um, which is also the home of some of the most special coral reefs we have on the planet. And so much times we talk about the doom and the gloom of the coral reef. There's a massive die-off of some estimating as much as 70% of the corals across the world are being lost forever by the year 2050. Um, there's places in Hawaii, like the east side of Hawaii Island, that are thriving coral communities, incredibly biodiverse, and uh, that's something that it's not only giving us great waves to surf, but it's actually helping to stabilize our environment and our climate. And that's something that I want to celebrate, not just as a surfer, but also as a scientist. I never really thought about professional surfing as a, a career or a job. Similarly, like I never thought about learning science and being a scientist as like a job. I, I just pursued things that I love. I love surfing. I love science. I love learning about my culture and I think because I, I pushed so hard to be the best me I could be in them, it turned into a job. For a young person who was considering pursuing a career in professional surfing, do it, like go for it. I don't think you have to um, be discouraged by the economy right now or people saying get a plan B, like be a pro surfer, but also be like a professional person where you're contributing to society in a way. Society is changing to like a more interdisciplinary approach, you know, in the future. There's gonna be like medical doctors who are gonna be winning the pipe masters. Like, I, I believe it, you know? There's people out there now, other surfers who are getting their degrees. There's people like Iski Britton in Ireland who has a PhD in environmental studies. She's won XXL awards. You have Yoni Klein, who is a medical doctor from Israel rides for a billabong. But if you want to be a champion, I like, go for that too. Like I think competition is healthy and you know we need the champions in our life. From what I've learned is this place here in Haleiwa, it's called Kawailoa. And it was named Haleiwa because of a hotel that was shaped like an Eva bird. So the name stuck after you know the 1800s. And uh, Pipeline, that place, uh, Ehukai is the traditional name, but from what I heard as well is that Ehukai was kind of the whole North Shore because Ehukai is that mist that comes off of the ocean when the waves are big. That's the Ehukai. So, you know, when the waves are pumping, this whole coastline is Ehukai. And then Sunset Beach, uh, just beyond that, is Paumalu, and that's the, the home of some of the best wave riders as well. What's so cool about the, the digital Vance Triple Crown is you can ride whatever you want to ride, and you can express yourself the way you want to express yourself. Maybe competitive surfing, you kind of don't get that opportunity as much, which is so great to be able to have an opportunity to just ride what you feel is appropriate for the, any given condition. This is the board I rode this morning at Palmalu, Sunset Beach, inspired by Ben Ipa Sting design. It was an assisted self-shape with Travis Reynolds and also glass by Alex Villalobos, Super Wolf. Um, so it's an original 18-inch single fin box and this is the setup I rode this morning, 7.4. Um, you know, sometimes it's important to just celebrate the more uh, Hawaiian way of riding. It's the alaia. Some people call it alaia. Um, but shaped by Brandon Ohuna out of Hilo, Hawaii. Um, this is my 6'6", 18 inch by 3 quarter inch fang alaia. So I'm um, hoping to get some good waves on this as well. I got some at Palmalu, yeah, a couple at um, Sunset. I've also been riding these uh, Siggy surfboards by Taylor Lane and uh, Bed Judkins. These boards are they have a laminate of uh, cigarettes. I know it's like 10,000 cigarettes per board or something like that. And right now I think it's a pretty critical time for us to think about 
where does our waste go, environmentalism, environmental management, things like that, and this is just a nice representation of that. All right, that's all we have for this week. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe below and leave us a comment. And to close the show out, we're going to visit, or you two are going to visit, our Californian friend, Karina Rizunko, who is out here in Australia for the winter, which is our summer, because, the, you know. Down under. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Cool. I haven't seen Karina in over a year, so I'm looking forward to seeing how she's going. So, Rainy, how are you going? I'm good, yeah. You look good. Yeah, thanks. You been surfing? Yep, Main Beach. Woo Have you been there? Main Beach, Byron Bay. Mm -hmm. Every person in Australia's been there. It's the most popular beach in the world. I'm going to take you for the dog's eye of your life in the morning, Rainy. Dog's eye? What's that? Dog's eye, pie. Yeah. I looked up how many calories a pie had. Do you know how many it is? How many? Too many for us to have for breakfast. There's, it's overboard. Well, here's the thing, Rainy. What? Has has a pie for breakfast every morning. Mushroom. I like mushrooms. Deconstruct it. No, what are you doing? Oh, that's pretty controversial, but I might let you off potentially. Yeah. Tampering with a dog's eye is very controversial. 